welcome everybody. I'm I'm Bonetz. I'm Deputy Director General here at SIDA headquarters. I want to welcome all of you to today's conference on aid and our changing environment. I'm very pleased to see all guests. Many of you have traveled long to contribute to today's program. And this meeting brings together leading experts, as we saw, development professionals from ministries and donor agencies, parliamentarians, policymakers from our partner countries, civil society researchers and students. We are here to listen and discuss what makes aid work or maybe not work and how aid may contribute to sustainable development. You are all very welcome. SIDA is happy to co-host this conference with our partner, UNU Wider, the World Institute for Development Economic Research, an institute, an institution of the United Nations University, and also DANIDA. And I think SIDA has supported UNU Wider for a number of years, recently intensifying our collaboration within the frame of the RECOM program. And today we will discuss, as said, what research has to say about how aid works. What has been successful in aid so far in coping with environmental problems and climate change? And what could be the role of aid when tackling environmental challenges in the future? And how can we, as development actors, use research results in order to optimize impact and reduce poverty in the long run. We realize that these challenges are huge and fundamental. And we know that in order to reduce poverty and sustain decent living conditions, we need to act in global partnerships and in a consorted way. These global partnerships must build on integrated knowledge and inclusive action. As a government agency, as experts in development cooperation, we at SIDA need to build on the best existing knowledge. And in order to optimize our operations, we need to be in close dialogue with the research community, both in Sweden and internationally. And furthermore, as the main implementing agency of Swedish development cooperation, we have a special responsibility to, to bridge the science policy gap and facilitate communication of research results regarding to other stakeholders. It's our hope that the meeting today will be an occasion for all of you to share and discuss research results and reflect on future directions for aid within the field of environment and climate changes. The research that will be presented today has been developed in the RECOM program, coordinated by UNU Wider, with support from the Swedish and Danish governments through SIDA and DANIDA. And RECOM focuses on what has worked in development cooperation, what could be scaled up and what is transferable across countries. And the RECOM program addresses five themes that cover key issues in international development assistance. The themes reflect priority areas of the Danish and Swedish governments. It's growth and employment, governance and fragility, gender equality, social sectors, environment, and climate change. And within each team, a number of studies are being produced, and the research findings are summarized in position papers from RECOM for each theme. And I highly recommend you to visit the RECOM homepage. I've been there where all these studies and position papers are available. We have invested in RECOM 
to find out what works in development cooperation. So please use the results. Today's meeting is the fifth in a series of seven open invitation meetings in which RECOM research is presented and discussed with stakeholders. In the first part today of this meeting, starting now, ending at two o'clock, existing research will be presented and use new research on the role of aid in relation to environment and challenge and climate change. In the second part, starting at two o'clock, you and you wider will present the synthesis of research concerning aid and its relation to environmental change. And we look also forward to the panel discussion on politics, policies, and priorities in aid in relation to environmental change. With these words, I would like to once again welcome all of you and all guests and participants, and I would like to give the floor to our co-host, Professor Finn Torp, director at U and U Wider. Thank you very much, Bo. I would like to add my words of welcome to those of Bo. It's a great pleasure to be here today. We've been looking forward to this event. It is an important event in the RECOM program. So I thought I should say a couple of words about RECOM. I will try not to repeat what has been said. But the starting point for an institution such as you and your wider and for the RECOM program at large, and I should say that you and you wider means what? Well, it's the United Nations University and then the World Institute for Development and Economic Research. This abbreviation, you and you, is sometimes not quite well known, but now you know. But our starting point is that aid is really very diverse and very complex. So this idea that any single individual can sort of have it all in the, in the head is just not the right point of departure. When you look to the international debate about these issues, you often see individuals who stand up and say that they know everything about it. You have the Dambi Samoyos, you have the Easterlies, et cetera, et cetera. Our starting point is a different one. Our starting point is that, well, in order to really come to grips with foreign aid, and in this case, environment and climate change, well, you have to try to bring together a large global network of informed people from different perspectives, and that's what we have been trying to do. So, we have been bringing together the UNU wider global network. We have partnered with institutions such as the Danish Institute for International Studies, and we have really tried to be as open-minded as we possibly can in bringing people together, and as an overall result of all of this, there will be about 225 studies that will be available at the end of this year. And as Paul rightly said, we will make a number of so-called position papers which will try to draw out, to synthesize what it is that we can say. Paul has already mentioned the four key questions. He has already mentioned the five thematic areas. And let me just add, well, why are we engaged in this? Why are we doing this program? Well, our point of departure is that the development job is very far from done. We still have about 1.3 billion people out there who are living as absolutely poor. We know that poor farmers have for many, many years and still today are facing every day in their lives environmental challenges. You are seeing how they, as I sometimes say, walk with their feet in water regularly, and they see their houses being flushed away and so on. So these issues, these problems, these challenges are still out there. And then on top comes climate change. We know that the global temperature is on the rise, and there is a whole range of other issues that comes as a consequence. So we need to develop, we need to mitigate, and we need to adapt. And as far as we can see it, it becomes relevant to ask the question, well, 
How can aid help? How has aid helped and what can we learn? How can we help provide a better evidence base for policy making in this area? Just for the record, I prepared a couple of slides where I've sort of tried to outline the questions that we are going to raise today, but I'll just hear concentrating on the, on the first one. What works, what does not work, and what could work in foreign aid in the pursuit of a sustainable human development agenda characterized by global environmental change and the need for planetary stewardship? I would suggest that we try to keep this question, this focus, in mind throughout the day, because that's the overall question that we are trying to address. Welcome, and it is my pleasure now to hand over to Sharon Yoma, who will basically take us through the day, and Sharon, in her kind but firm way, will lead us the whole way through part one, through part two, and to the conclusion at four o'clock. Welcome, Sharon. Thank you, let's do it. Thank you.